What's going on everybody? C4 here. Welcome back to the channel. We are here for part four of our Madden 21 realistic rebuild of the Philadelphia Eagles on this beautiful Saturday. And as we've done for every episode here in this Eagles rebuild, we've kind of left off with the first pick in the draft so that I can go off your guys' comments and decide who to pick. It wasn't as much of a landslide as I thought it was going to be. I thought there was one obvious pick, but there was a lot of people that kind of liked... I don't know, maybe the storyline of Van Buren, because Van Buren is an iconic name within the Eagles organization, but we have Miles Sanders, and there was enough people that said, hey, let's get Van Buren, work a storyline in, and hey, if he's still there in the second round, by all means, but we're not going to be picking until 29 in the second round, it might be kind of tough, but most people did agree with me that the player that we should get in the first round here is DJ Pratt, insane combine, insane wide receiver, we still need help at wide receiver three. Because right now, behind Jalen Rager, who is an absolute stud muffin, and Tylen Wallace, who's very, very good. I, you know, it's it's JJ Ortega Whiteside, it's 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 Tamorian Terry, guys that are normal devs in the you know, mid-high 70s. So there's a chance that Pratt is something truly special. There's also a chance that we're just gonna get hit with the Madden Jaff class and he's gonna be a normal dev. But let's see what it is. Man, this is going to be the pick. And may, like I said, maybe we'll I'll, I'll skip into the second round here. And, and once we get to like maybe pick 10, if I can trade up and get Van Buren, I will do so. But for our first pick at 29, we are going to select DJ Pratt, wide receiver out of Texas. And he is a, my God, he's a beast. But the uh, as always, the dev trade kind of sucks. He's number six in true value, getting him at pick 29, 77 deep threat. We got 96 speed, 95 acceleration, 93 agility, 90 jumping, 80... Ca this guy is actually insane. 95 change of direction. This is the best wide receiver I think I've ever drafted in Madden 21. Without a shadow of a doubt, welcome to Philly. My God, Madden, just make your game fun. Like, I swear to God, if we look at the top 10 players... I'm going to do that after this draft. Just and I, If I'm wrong... So be it. Maybe I'm just getting bad luck. I want to look at the top 10 players and true talent in this year's draft. What are their dev traits? If you're telling me the top 10 players in the draft, they should all have dev traits. Honestly, in true value, the top 10 players in a draft class should have dev traits. My gut says la less than 50. Less than 50%. So five or less will have dev traits. We'll find that out at the end of this draft. I couldn't even get to the tents. He went right off. And man, these guys, there's, there's, there's three running backs. They were very, very good. We'll see in just a sec when we get to the end of the draft. But Van Buren, like I said, that'd be way too much for me to trade up to get him in the top 10, given where we are picking, given that he would clearly be running back to be behind our X-Factor Miles Sanders. But uh, it'll be really annoying to see if he's 77 with a hidden dev trait. Tell you that. All right, we're here. Uh, time for a draft recap. And uh, yeah, really after DJ Pratt, there wasn't any super sexy picks because usually I like to go through the picks. Uh, in the realistic agreement, but there was nothing, to, you know, we just got a bunch of 60s. We had two seventh round projected defensive tackles, and they both came out solid. George Weary at a Texas 72 normal, and he's a scheme fit. And then we got Martin Thornton, 73 normal, out of LSU run stuffer scheme fit. So I like having some youth there on the defensive line, but here we go. This is going to be something that, you know, I'm, I'm going to find, I'm going to clip it, I'm going to upload it, because this is an issue that I, I, I think is actually kind of, not killing rebuilds, not killing franchise mode, but like this, it had like it's a design, right? There had to be some sort of design in the analytics to dictate what players get dev traits, what players don't get dev traits in these Madden generated classes. It's a generator. It generates something is deciding what is getting dev traits and what is not. So what I want to do, because I got Pratt, he was top ten, number six in true talent. I want to see in this draft class. I want to look at the top ten players. How many of them? We'll just go to the NFL. How many of them actually have a dev trait? I'm going to say, out of 10, 4, 3 or 4 at the most, when you think about it in actuality, think about the real draft classes. Think about every new iteration of Madden. What are the rookies when you get them? I would say, I don't know the analytics off the top of my head, but I would say right now, you look at the top. Here, let's do it. Let's just do it right now. Before we, we got to get a comparison, right? We got to get a comparison. So, uh, well, I mean, we're four years in. Uh, it's too hard. But let's just think off the top of our head. What were the draft picks? I'm going to do it literally right here live. We're going to do it live and see if I can remember. So 2020 NFL draft. So Joe Burrow was first overall, right? Joe Burrow had a dev trait. 
We're going by top, and this isn't even like top 10 true talent. These are just the top 10 picks in order. So we had uh, Joe Burrow had a dev trade. Chase Young had a superstar X factor. Jeff Okuda, superstar ability. Andrew Thomas, star. Tua had a star. Justin Herbert had a star. Derek Brown was superstar. Isaiah Simmons, superstar. CJ Henderson, superstar. The, and Jedrick Wills had a star dev trade. So all 10 picks, if we're just trying to find this gray area of top 10 true talent, all 10 picks in real life had a dev trade. Now let's check out this Madden Generated draft class. All right, well, this is going on YouTube. This is going on Twitter. We, uh, as a community, have been frustrated this year with the Madden Generated draft classes because it feels like there's just not enough hidden dev traits. So what we're going to do is we're just in a random generated draft class. It's not always going to be like for like, but I feel like this is the consistent trend that we've seen in Madden 21 with the generated draft classes. I'm going to look at the top 10 players. There's actually 11 because there's a bunch of guys tied at 76 overall. I want to see how many of these guys have dev traits. It's not a like for like comparison, but for an idea of the rookies that were in Madden 21. So the top 10 players from the 2020 draft class, all 10 had hidden dev traits. Let's see how these top 10 players kind of stand up. Does it keep that balance of being able to draft exciting, young, fun players? Or is it going to be a bunch of normal devs that kind of just kill the, the excitement a little bit in the draft? So without further ado, let's take a look. We start with Orlando Godwin. All right, perfect start. Hidden dev linebacker. Dom McKnight, normal. Macklin, normal. McBath, normal. Madden, Normal. Selby. Normal. DJ Pratt, who we drafted in our Eagles franchise. Normal dev. We have Bradley Charles. Normal dev. Josh Van Buren. Normal dev. Weldon. Normal dev. Ross. Normal dev. And the number one player in the draft. Normal dev. Yeah. Um... And this is coming up more often than not. Like, I'm with consistency, I do five year franchise modes weekly. I would say 90% of the drafts are like this. So, hey, can we get in a new patch that the generated draft class don't just kind of kill all the excitement and give everyone normal devs? Have a little bit of variety, you know? How about the, the seven to eight guys that are consistently undrafted free agents with hidden dev traits? Maybe apply it to the top 10 players in any given draft class. Thanks. Guess we forgot, guess, guess we forgot to turn off injuries in the, in, in the preseason. Sorry. Sorry. Can I, can I turn injuries off and then will they go away? Or is that because there's pre-existing injuries they don't go away? Oh, no. Now we want a realistic. Injuries do happen in the preseason. It's Philadelphia. Let's see. Is he back? Did I turn injuries off? Nope. Oh. Nope. He's still here. Sorry. Fuck! Alrighty, so we're here for year four, and we already have the sensation news that we're not going to have Miles Sanders back. Until week five, maybe week four. I don't want to. So we got. Uh, yeah, let's see if I can sign. And I don't even have enough salary cap. Probably even sign like the best for each. Sometimes there's some nice running backs here though. Daryl Henderson, Naheem Hines. What do we got? Benny Snell. Let's. Uh, let's go, Daryl Henderson. Whatever. Can I sign him? We sure can. All right. Daryl Henderson, welcome to Philadelphia. You're going to be our starting running back. Who is going to get sacrificed for you? It'll be one of these wide receivers because we have like 80 of them. All right, well, let's meet our squad. So to kick off year four, we already are facing some adversity, but it wouldn't be Philadelphia if we didn't have to suffer through some pretty bad injuries. And relatively, we've been fine. I mean, Wentz has been healthy, Rager, Wallace, all these guys. But I don't think we've had like one bad injury. This is the very first one that's creeped up its ugly head. Just got to find a way to endure. Uh, looking at the team here, we'll actually go with Church because he has the dev trait as our D-tackle too. But, you know, a little bit of change here on the defensive line. But generally speaking, I'm optimistic this defense is going to take its game to the next level. And offensively, hey, let's 
Anderson's a, fun, a fine young running back. He's got great stats. That 96 acceleration, his burst should be absolutely insane. So, I mean, hey, push coming. We might have found our RB2 to complement Miles Sanders long term. This could be a blessing if we can find a way to make it out through these first five games with an above 500 record. So let's get to it. I don't really want to play a whole lot of games up, Miles Sanders, but week one against Dallas at home at the link. Let's go, man. Daryl Henderson time. All right, first run. Daryl Henderson season in Philadelphia. Doesn't read the right gap. I think my uh, joysticks are starting to go on my controller. One yard, though. One yard. Wasn't a TFL or anything. Could have been worse. Could have been a fumble. That's how this year's going to go, is it? Wouldn't be an Eagles rebuild without mass injuries. So we're waiting to see. Oh, no. Well, oh, chair. Sure. Jalen Hurts time. Almost picked off. Awesome. Muscle cramps. Okay, these, hey, could have been muscle cramps. What is it? The time, time of the month, Carson? Come on, bud. Muscle cramps? Drink some water. Alright, not looking good. I think we're gonna get work today. I feel like I just feel it. Feel it. Feel like someone someone had uh EA tapped into my microphone. They saw that I made fun of their draft classes and how bad they are. So I'm gonna get absolutely worked here today. Started with the Miles Sanders injury. We have an injury cramping. Stage nine cramping for Carson Wentz. This could be a rough one. Well Madden is gonna be his favorite, but I'm pretty sure I was doing work with all Madden when we played the Detroit Lions franchise. So There we go. That's as easy as easy as it can be. First down, move the chains. Jalen Hurts. Must be some bad cramps for Carson Wentz. You'll know actually be the fuck hilarious. Carson Wentz comes in like just comes right back if we get in the red zone. Like, All right, I'll finish it from here. Ooh, that's right. All right, let's go. No huddle. I want to see if we can get Jalen. Jalen's actually looking pretty solid. Does not feel like a backup quarterback in here. We're able to hit Huntley out the backfield. Is Juke still... Are you guys at play? Is Juke still moving this? Because I don't think I've hit a single Juke all year. And I feel like maybe they changed the, the controls around. Because they did that for a couple things unnecessarily this year. But Daryl Henderson era! He has to wait. He got very close to the one yard line. But I, I'm just not hitting jukes. I don't know why. I'm not frustrated with it yet, but it is something I've noticed. But there we go. Daryl Henderson in his first game in spell of the elite Miles Sanders gets the touchdown to tie this game up at seven apiece early in the second quarter. This is a deep ball there, though. Pretty good. way no way no that's that's insanity from cd lamb can't complain about that that was a perfect i don't even say that was a perfect ball that is just insanity from cd lamb tied up here ah damn it man getting worked slants to amari cooper it's effective There we go. That's a good pass. Wide open, but that was a good pass. Start off the slants here. We need touchdown, two-point conversion. Defensive stop, touchdown, two-point conversion. Doable. Oh, there's a safety there. Fuck me! Oh, great effort, Jalen Hurts. Great effort. Great effort, everybody.
Actually, a great ball. That was actually a great ball to Tamorian Terry. Only people happy right now are the Jalen Hurts' family that started him in fantasy football this week. Fuck it, let's run the slants. What do you guys gonna do? Complain about slants even more in the comments? Oh, if, if it's good enough for all Madden, it's good enough for all C4. There we go. Oh. Might not be used to this in the SEC, but the Big 12. Garbage time points. Jalen Hurts, come on. Oh. Ragger bombs, 80 yards. Pad the stats, don't matter. Big 12, it's what we know. Big 12 to Big 12. Pad the stats. That's what the Big 12 is all about. All right, we're going to look at the stats here because for some reason on PC, and I would love to hear if anyone else on PC, every time my game finishes, my computer just starts like, the fans start a fire in and I get skipped frames in my recording. It's only when the game finishes. Don't know why. Very frustrated with it. But either way, Jalen Hurts in his, you know, coming in for the injured Carson Wentz, 440 yards, three touchdowns, did have two interceptions. It's a work in progress. 69 rushing yards. You look pretty good. I'll be honest. I was impressed. I was very much impressed. Rager, buck 35 and a touchdown. Wallace went over 100 yards. 69 yards for Dallas Goddard. Uh, defense didn't really do a whole lot, but Jalen Hurts. And what in the hell is going on with Carson Wentz? We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. In a shocking development that the league hasn't seen since Andrew Luck's retirement in August 2019, Philadelphia Eagles starting quarterback Carson Wentz has announced his decision to step away from the game of football. In a press conference today at the NovaCare Center in Philadelphia, Wentz said he had a long hard talk with the Lord and believes the earth shattering cramps that he had that caused him to exit Sunday's game against Dallas was God showing him the light. In what Wentz could only compare to the worst shit pains of your life, he plans on leaving football to go on a mission. A mission to hand out Bibles and bringing his food truck to southeastern Denmark to help out the malnourished and lost souls there. Jalen Hurts is now the man in Philadelphia. I will remember you. Will you remember that? All right, well, let's see what Jalen Hurts can do in the sim. It starts off with a team historically that the Philadelphia Eagles have always struggled against. So if he can get a win against Seattle, that'd be uh, that'd be a huge gift for his confidence and the confidence of this team to bounce back from that Dallas loss. And he does the job. 29-21. That happened in this one. Jalen Hurts playing well, and he played lights out. 300 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. Great connection there with Tylen Wallace. It's heat. Heating up, Goddard did well. Even Rager almost 100 yards defensively. Got some sacks from Basham and Josh Sweat. An interception from the middle linebacker, Ralph Mitchell. Okay. I'm a little bit worked up, a little bit emotional. But we're coming along. We're coming along. All right, falling a little bit back down here to reality. Losing against, you know, it's a somewhat strong Patriots team, let's be honest. Um... Redskins, two and oh, we call them the, the football team, two and two, two and two. And we get the win. We're not as bad as them. And for yes, for as much as we have Jalen Hurts in the backfield doing his thing, scrambling, it is going to be that much better to have our superstar X Factor running back back there in Miles Sanders. We, uh, I don't know, man. Look at this slate of games. I feel like it's not ready to come back in yet. What about that Bears? But we have a little bit of a mini rivalry with the Chicago Bears here in this rebuild. They're 0-6. If we lose to the Bears, if we lose to this 0-6 Bears team, I think we'll play that 49er game before the bye. If we win it, maybe it'll be that Week 11 divisional game against the Giants. But let's see. It's 0-6. Thank you. 42-17. Jalen Hurts, NFC Offensive Player of the Week. With 255 yards, three passing touchdowns, as well as 21 rushing yards. That's you know, that's that's a good sign of a quarterback being able to get a win in a must-win situation. Um, can I upgrade him? Oh well, first of all, let's welcome Fletcher Cox back to the 99 club where he belongs. Absolute monster. Uh, we have a, actually a skill here to upgrade for Miles Booby Sanders. To a 93, but let's see Jalen Hurts. I want to see what the stats are starting to look like. Last time I spent, Jalen Hurts was a 74. 
And then I spent uh, on the uh, improviser, and he went to a 76. But I kind of want to keep him in the scrambler, even though it's not a scheme fit. We are really thrown on the run every time I've been able to hop in and play with him. So let's let's do that. And we have uh, a chance here to... Ooh, okay, Maddox is back from injury. I didn't even know he was hurt. Week 8 against the 49ers. As we go into the bye, we have some momentum, and it actually... We don't have any momentum. Comes crashing. We go through the bye week. We got week 10. We're 4-4. Four four, second place in the NFC East. Two games behind Dallas. Um, I actually think I want to go right to that Dallas game. I want a revenge game. So we get the Jets. Should be able to win this one. Okay. Phenomenal. Cants. Who's hurt? Tamorion Terry. Wide receiver 4. He's going to miss the clash here for sure against the New York Giants. And we lose that. So it's awesome. Fletcher Cox wants to stop this losing streak. I know how we're going to stop this losing streak. I'm going to come in. I'm going to kick the shit out of the Dallas Cowboys. Let's work on the D-line. I feel like we need more sacks. All right. So that loss to the Giants was frustrating. Four and six. It's a transitionary year. Not too many teams. Like, what were the Colts the year Andrew Luck surprised and retired? They weren't particularly good. I promise you that. So, I mean, if we can find a way here to beat the Cowboys. Do I have any, any upgrades? Eh, not really for anyone. Uh, if I can find a way to beat the Cowboys, that's 5-6. and six. Find a way to beat the Giants, 6-6. Six and six. Go back to 500. Things could be looking good. We have another in... Aye! Ever... That's a great tackle. That's a great tackle, Davion Taylor. Forcing a third and seven. Dak Prescott on their opening drive here. They're, they're chewing up a lot of clock. He's yet to miss a throw. So I would like to disrupt that. I don't know who's going to be the man to do so. Is it Basham or is it Avante Maddox giving you that nice blanket coverage? He let he, Every time you throw it at Avante Maddox, well, your guy will catch it, but he might not get a lot of yards. God. Okay. In the pain. Oh, nice slant touchdown. Nice slant touchdown. I've never seen a slant touchdown before. Well, that's beautiful. That's beautiful, Tylen Wallace. Wide open. No one covered him. Terrific route running. And we're able to tie this one up at seven. Hey. Great tackle, Josh Sweat. Zeke's hurt. Pulled his ass. Third and 15. We have a very good shot here at getting off the field and holding to a field goal. Let Jalen Hurts get back out there and do the thing. Double team by Fletcher Cox. Good night. Suicide pass. Elijah Mitchell with the breakup, and we hold Dallas to a field goal. I'm done playing defense. Don't have it. Just don't have it today, fellas. Sometimes, first of all, who decided that it'd be a great idea in a video game to have all the lights from from Cherry World, like the sun coming through? That's awesome. I'm just too distraught from Carson Wentz's powerful retirement speech. I, I just can't play defense. I can only play offense and honor him that way. Oh, that's beautiful. That's a thing of beauty to Jason Huntley out in the backfield. And there we go. We got in a rhythm. We can throw away that interception because we have a touchdown to build upon. Play on defense. Luckily, that wasn't a turnover. Let's kick the field goal and tie this up at 27. Oh, yes. Daryl Henderson Jr. breaks free. Maybe that's what Dallas wanted. Maybe they wanted to give us the touchdown. They would, they would trust that they can go down and tie this one up. Okay. Free football here in Dallas. Let's go Tails. It is Tails. We've won the toss and I will receive the ball. Oh, hell of a run. Hell of a run, Daryl Henderson. Filling in nicely for Booby Sanders. 
can't handle the, they just can't handle the run. Keep running it. Don't fumble it. Nope. And it is good. There it is. 14 seconds for us to hold on to get a victory. But there's a second overtime. There's a second overtime. They 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 changed the rules. There's a second overtime now. You can't just change the rules. There's one overtime. The other team has a chance if I kick a field goal until the end of overtime. Not give them more overtime. This is a fucking travesty. What? Another bug to send to the deaths. Absolutely not. They got a second overtime. God, this game sucks. This is like the most bullshit rebuild I've ever done. Like the most Madden shit I've had shelled my way in quite some time. From the injuries to Carson Wentz with the cramps to, to the draft classes to college football overtime rules just randomly happening. Uh, all right, man. Let's just that's that's awesome. Let's just get through the season. Can we get a win here against the six and five Giants? We can. Nineteen fifteen. Let's look at our own free agents. Who wants to get paid? So Darius Slay looking for a one year deal. I feel comfortable giving him that. He wants a little bit more money. Jason Kelsey absolutely a priority for me for make him to retire as a Philadelphia Eagle. Kayvon Wallace has actually been fairly solid at free safety. So let's bring him back. Andre Dillard has been solid. At left tackle, let's bring him back. Davion Taylor's actually been one of the surprises on the defense side of the ball, developing very, very nicely. Yeah, that's actually not brutal for Basham, but I feel like in, in his case, maybe we can let him hit the open market. Uh, it's not going to be the worst thing we have to do. This is not going to be fun. Paling Jay and Hurts, 93. Almost $94 million for a 78 normal death, but we've made the commitment. We have made this commitment to Jalen Hurts as our now franchise quarterback. Week 14, battle of five and sevens. And come on, losing in there. But hopefully there's still some good news and we can get Darius Slay locked into a brand new contract. One year, $15.3 million. He appreciates that. So we have the Cardinals up next. Let's just get to the end of the season. This is a shit show. All right, beat the Cardinals 13-3. to Hard defense, strong defense, whatever you want to call it. We're giving them that hard D. Is there a way that we could, like, sneak in? Six, can eight, eh, well, eight and eight's the highest we can go. Can eight and eight sneak? It absolutely can. Eight and eight can absolutely sneak into the playoffs. So the battle of the six and eights. Tua versus Jalen Hurts. And Jalen Hurts gets the job done. I'm sure there's some... Extra motivation, back dating back to Alabama. Miles Sanders. If we can make the playoffs and get Miles Sanders back. We didn't make it. I literally just <laughs> Yes. Eight and eight Eagles, baby. Week 17. Jalen Hurts. Four touchdowns. Yes. Thank you. Oh, that's unreal. Jalen freaking hurts. Finding a way. Now an 80 overall. We had our playoffs with our new $90 million quarterback. 80 overall with the confidence boost. And we found a way to make the playoffs. And it's the Vikings. And what happened the last time the Eagles and the Vikings met in the playoffs? Huh? One of the biggest ass whoopings I've ever seen as an Eagle fan. So let's, uh, how did we get it? Well, Dallas top dogs, I guess, you know, cheating at Jerry World, adding in college rules and stuff. Uh, there's an asterisk next to that NFC East title for the Dallas Cowboys. What did Jalen Hurts do? Well, he was first in the league in passing yards on the number one offense, eighth in touchdowns, and that season right there is better than any year that we got with Carson Wentz. And you know how I feel in real life. I hate the Jalen Hurts pick. I still believe in Carson Wentz, but... 
I got one the Super Bowl, and Carson Wentz was, uh, you know, he's off with the Lord now. God bless him. So we are going to be going with Jalen Hurts. That is that is insanity. Able to chip in also th almost 400 rushing yards, three more touchdowns. So he finished with almost 5,000 yards and almost 40 touchdowns in his first year as a starter. I'm in. And, you know, who knows where our record would have been. We made the playoffs, and we essentially – had a franchise quarterback retire on week two. And we had Miles Sanders for two games. One or two games. Uh, receiving Jalen Rager. Loves Jalen Hurts. Great connection there. 76 catches, 1,200 yards, seven touchdowns. Eight and five for Dallas Goddard. 745 and five for Tylen Wallace. Look at that, man. Jason Huntley out the backfield. Six receiving touchdowns. I might actually need to re-sign him. Uh, we love Jason Huntley. I think he was only looking for like a $4 million contract. We have more than enough salary to sign him and still be able to splurge in free agency. Uh, DJ Pratt, our first round draft pick, 600 yards, three touchdowns. That's solid for a rookie. And on the defensive side, Ralph Mitchell led the team with 97 tackles. Davion Taylor, 96, as well as 10 TFLs, three and a half sacks and two picks. Nine sacks for Fletcher Cox, seven and a half, 12 TFLs. And that guy, Terrell Bash was only looking for $4 million bucks to come back for one year. We might have to pay it. Again, you kind of have to throw ratings out the, the window here in Madden 21 and go by production. That is one of my tips I can drop to all you guys. Two picks, 13. His best year as an Eagle since we drafted him in the first round. And looking at the yearly awards MVP. Yes! MVP! Yes! Oh, yes! Jalen Hurts, MVP, Offensive Player of the Year. You can only go up one dev trait, which is awesome. And watch him still. I mean, I'm not going to. I don't want to just. I'm not an anti Madden guy. So let's trust Madden. He at least will go up to a star dev, get off that normal dev. But, all right. Defensive Player of the Year. Davion Taylor coming in at number seven. Offensive Rookie of the Year. Where's our guy? Pratt at seven. And then for these individual awards, no, Philadelphia Eagles, outside of Jalen Hurts and Jake the Snake Elliott being the best kicker, we have the MVP. This is one of the, this is like literally Mahomes-esque, drafting a, a young, you know, top fifth, I don't know what pick Eagles actually got, we'll just say top 50 player. It's similar to Patrick Mahomes sitting and then finally getting his chance and being absolutely unbelievable. And we got a chance here to do some damage in the playoffs. 8-8 eight eight Eagles, 11-5 Vikings. Let's get after it. I mean, I sure shit wasn't really playing like an MVP. So let's let, let's pop a bear this one. Let the, let the Eagles team that found a way to make the playoffs and had Jalen Hurts playing like an MVP, which got an instant touchdown to start things off here. And then if we start to struggle a little bit, I can hop in and try my best. But look at this. I'm tr putting my faith in the team. And they're finding a way to get the job done. 17 points. Minnesota, I mean, they're hanging in there. It's a strong team. We are the 8-8 eight eight ugly stepchild of the playoffs. But sometimes that works in your favor. So we're able to go in halftime down a score. Yeah, here we're coming. I feel like we're just we're starting to get a little lax. The Davis School's third and inches. Is Miles Sanders back? Nope. All right, we got Jason Huntley, though, a man that I really do want to re-sign. You need an inch, bud. You need it. It's, gets a great block by 66 and a whole lot more. Jason, is he my running back one? Where's, how does he already have nine rushes? Third down in the red zone. Okay. Third and nine. Let's go drive trail. And uh, hmm. if Rager can split the corner there and the safety. But feet weren't set. I, you should have caught that. Honestly, should have caught that. And eh, I kicked the field goal. We're tied up. Rager should have caught that. Oh, he should have caught that for sure. All right, we're only down three. And we had a turnover. Not what we were looking for. And another turnover. Two straight turnovers. They picks? We live and die. Yeah, we lived and died by Jalen Hurts. There's your MVP, everybody. I can't I can't be mad losing to Kyle Trask. He's an absolute beauty. I'm getting ready to go watch him in about an hour's time for the Gators. But uh live and die by Jalen Hurts. Hey, I'm not paying a 
Hey, I don't know what his base. He's a 77 normal dev quarterback, $100 million. And then he comes and wins the MVP. But then in the first playoff game, he has three picks. Live and die by Jalen Hurts. We still got one more year to go. I mean, it's, it's as Eagles as it gets, right? You know, we had a chance. Who knows if we had Miles Sanders? We had Miles Sanders, who's literally our highest overall player on the offensive side of the ball. Things might have been differently. But we're here looking at the Pro Bowl. Jalen Hurts made it. Nice. I like seeing that. Jalen Rager is there representing the Philadelphia Eagles. We have, uh, wow, no Jason Kelsey. It's a little bit weird. On the defense side, Fletcher Cox is defensive tackle one. Uh, probably kicker. Jake Elliott at kicker. Nice. All right, a couple of Eagles getting represented here on the NFC team in the Pro Bowl for whatever that really means. And I think, have they, has Dallas made the Super Bowl every year? If not, like, I feel confident in saying they've made it three out of the four years we've done. Uh, we have a chance here, though, to get to some nice, valuable points for Jalen Hurts and confirm that he went up a dev trait. Plus one throw power is actually huge. 84 throw power is not good. And he got another one. We got plus two throw power up to 86. That's actually amazing. Couldn't have asked for anything. Now, if we could just have Dallas losing Super Bowl 58... And they find a way to win. Like, I am I am pretty certain Dallas has won the Super Bowl three out of the four years so far in this rebuild. Yikes. All right, free agents. I do want to bring back Jason Huntley, even though that's maybe ill-advised. How much money do we actually have? 46 million bucks. If Basham takes this, oh, he wants to play for a new team. What about you, Jason Huntley? Yeah, hey, yeah, uh, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's honorable. He appreciates us. So we go into free agency, actually had 40 some million bucks, and I've negotiated a couple obvious players. First up, we need a defensive end. Uh, so I'm looking at Caleb Chaisson, formerly of LSU, formerly of Jacksonville. 81 normal, but he's, he's, he's an upgrade for sure, and there's no other bids on him, so we don't have to worry about overpaying. I'm looking at Isaiah Simmons, and I want to move him to be our middle linebacker. Uh, I, I feel like we can get better linebacker play and having Isaiah Simmons, Davion Taylor, and Voshan Joseph. Three superstar devs, and I actually think, spoiler, Davion Taylor went to an X-Factor, which he did. Yeah, that's, 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 just, that's just too much. It's too much to handle. I think that's going to be able to, that's going to be game-changing for a defense. I did also want to get Jeremy Chin. For those of you that trust the beat reporters, the, all the reports that I've seen from people that I trust that seem to have a no within the Eagles organization, if Philly wasn't going to draft Jalen Hurts in the second round, this was their guy. And he's already looking really good for the Carolina Panthers. He's like a hybrid linebacker safety. He's doing it all. He's a bunch of, I think he has the most tackles for a rookie in the NFL right now. So it's not looking particularly great considering in real life, Jalen Hurts has like one snap with the Eagles and he fumbled it. And Jeremy Chin, which from what I can tell, like you looking at the athletic and guys that have really good access, this was the guy Philly was, was kind of tossing him and picking. Uh, but we have Kayvon Wallace there. And I know I like Kayvon Wallace. He was probably my favorite player, my favorite pick from the 2020 draft. So, yeah, let's just get Simmons there. And I'm thinking, because where we're at, it might make sense to, to pay and bring a running back in. It just, Miles Sanders can't stay healthy. And we look at someone like DeAndre Swift, who's been a career running back by committee guy with Carrion Johnson in Detroit. He's a Philly kid. So I'm getting an insurance policy. There's, I, have, I have, you know, a lot of money. We can, we can spend the money, and I, I want that insurance policy. So looking at the rest, I mean, maybe we could bring in a center because we're probably not going to be able to draft a center. But, I mean, I don't know. Not a lot of upgrades. Lindsey, uh, you know, let's bring in Pouncey, one of the Pounceys, Gator Bias, if you will. And that's, hey, we shopping. We big-time spenders here in the final pier. Might as well, man. Can't take this money. And the only guy that, that has some competition is Isaiah Simmons, and we're blowing the Bengals and Bears bid out the water. And that's how you handle business. Four for four. Pouncey, Shaysaw, DeAndre Swift, and Isaiah Simmons. Welcome to Philadelphia. And next up is the draft. And like I said, we've been finishing all of our videos here on the draft. Now, this is like the least important draft because not only, I don't really think anyone's going to make any plays or... Or anything, but hey, injuries could happen, right? Injuries could absolutely happen. So here's the draft board in terms of first round talents. I mean, we don't really need wide receivers, but this guy got 4 2 speed. 
have not seen that, so that's probably what 96 somewhere in that range. I got a couple first round tackles, they do exist in Madden 20, but none of them are you know early first round talents. Uh, the best pound for pound look, I got two six round D tackles with first round grades, I could bring them in for depth. I got an outside linebacker here that's not really a scheme fit, I more so would probably have to kick him down to uh, a defensive end, but I'm considering it. Defensive end depth could be. I'd much rather, right now, this is the best guy, Tony Patterson. However, a couple safeties. If we're not sold on Caleb Vanche saw, I do have Santrell Grenard from Auburn, who is an early first-round talent. Combine ticks off a lot of the boxes, what you're looking for. Or we have this guy, Tyrell Towns out of Iowa, who is a little bit more freakier, 6'4", 200 pounds, with an insane combine. So I'm kind of thinking maybe we grab a free safety. Uh, you know, it's all about depth and getting the best player. And the fact that this guy got early first round talent, I think that kind of makes sense. But as always, I'll let you guys dictate what direction we go in the draft in the comment section below. So hope you guys did enjoy this rebuild. Uh, obviously, again, this, this is what I'm trying to do more with the realistic rebuilds is make them, you know, you never know what's going to happen. You never know what's going to happen. And I want to be influenced by some of my previous content, which we've all enjoyed myself especially so hope you guys did enjoy this video as always your first time stopping by don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button smash the like button if you enjoyed and until next time it's c4 saying peace out and to all my canadian fans out there fans i found that sounds egotistical and disgusting to everyone out there that watches my stuff and lives in canada have a great thanksgiving eat them turkeys get them dirty birds i'll see you guys tomorrow peace out go eagles